a desert planet with twin suns. Why do I sense we've picked up another pathetic life form? Use my knowledge. Much to learn, you still Welcome back to Twin Sun Talks, folks. I'm your host, Jonah Liu. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, welcome to our third edition of The Ability to Speak Does Not Make You Intelligent. The Ability to Speak Does Not Make You Intelligent. Uh, on this week, we have Scott Fonseca back on the pod. Scott, how you doing, bud? I'm doing very well, thank you. Pleasure to be back. Dude, glad to have you back. It's been a sec, because I haven't really had you on since that first episode. You came on with Jeb for a little bit, but I haven't yep. had you on for like a, a proper episode uh, in a while, so glad to have you. It's good to be back. Yeah, I was an early guest, so now it's good, cool to see how many episodes there are now. Yeah, coming full circle, coming full circle. Uh, all righty, let's just jump straight in. We're going to do a little bit of uh, This Is Where The Fun Begins. This is where the fun begins. Alrighty, uh, so kind of like in my edition with uh, Jeb and Sean, uh, we're going to do a little bit of Star Wars versus everything else, which is essentially where we just do some hypotheticals where it's like, okay, we got um, uh, Star Wars characters versus characters from other uh, pop culture franchises, whether it's Marvel, DC, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, anything like that. Um, so the first scenario that I have is... Uh, a Hogwarts student versus a Jedi Padawan. Ooh, that's a and good we can question. we can modify this to be like a wizard versus just a regular Jedi as well. But I thought I that, like I like the entry level question. I like the yeah entry yeah level, yeah, you know? yeah. So I, what are your thoughts? We haven't talked about this beforehand, so this yeah. is all off the cuff. This is a very good question. Okay, so I think you see in like the first couple Harry Potter movies, like if you don't go to class, you don't actually like pay attention to the spells. Yeah. You're not going to know anything. Exactly. So that's something to think about. Um, yeah. But, you know, maybe Jedi Padawans, like the ability to have a lightsaber, maybe it gives you at least some skill to be able to do something with it, hold yeah. with basically a sword. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, the thing with Padawans are like, I feel like Hogwarts, Padawans have already learned like most of the rudimentary Jedi skills because they need to learn all those to get to the level of Padawan to begin with. Whereas... True. I don't know. I don't know how much it translates because in my brain, it's like, I don't, uh, we don't know if like Expelliarmus works against a lightsaber, if that's just a wand. Like, do we see that used against anything other than a wand? Or is, is that like an overall disarming spell? Or is that just, like, I think that that Ooh, plays into it a bit. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> but even I, then, I don't like, know the answer to that one. they have the force. So like, does it even matter? Honestly, it probably doesn't. I think, I think we're both coming to the same yeah. conclusion aren't we yeah. but, but also one one final thing yeah. is if the killing curse can be deflected by a lightsaber because there's no counter curse to it yeah but could a lightsaber like is it a projectile or is it like just a, like a thought a state of mind you know what i mean yeah yeah i feel like it is a state of mind but at the same time like in the last movie it, it, it's kind of displayed as a projectile. Um, yeah. I'm forgetting how it's displayed in the books, but I think, uh, gosh, I think you would know better than me. You're you're a little more I into don't... that sort of stuff, but yeah, I don't really know. You you stumped me there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't but know. I think, yeah, let's go with let's go with Jedi Padawan. I, I would assume let's, so. Let's, I think that because yeah. like Obi Wan was like 20 years old and was a Jedi Padawan. Yeah, so that's like, true. I feel like overall experience Whereas... would probably way more in favor of the jedi i totally um, agree yeah 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 um okay i have a couple more do you want to do you want to choose which one we do here a, a b or c let's go let's go c okay what holds up longer beskar or vibranium Ooh. okay now that is a good one yeah so let's think about what we've seen each exposed to yeah um I mean, obviously, Vibranium, they say, like, strongest metal in the world. Beskar, very similar. Um, sorry, you, you cut out there for a second. I'm not entirely sure if that's... Oh, sorry. I was um, just saying that they kind of say Vibranium is, like, strongest metal in the world in the Marvel series, and Beskar is likely similar. Yeah. They're very, they're very so, similar in properties where it's, like, I don't know, because the... 
the uh like the the reasoning for like vibranium is that it's like vibrationally absorb absorbent okay and so like okay, any yeah. impact that happens against it is just immediately dissipated um yeah and so beskar it seems to be more it's like it absorbs energy rather than like actual like brute force attacks sure and so like we see it like repelling lightsabers we see it repelling energy bolts we don't really see it like against anything other than energy based attacks whereas that's really yeah. all that we see vibranium pitted against um i so, wonder if yeah the whole vibration thing is interesting i wonder if it's a sustained like uh assault on vibranium like over periods of time like crushing it down yeah i wonder if the vibrations in that like i wonder if it actually holds up where the best yeah. would probably hold up to that right i mean we haven't really seen anything destroy beskar we did see thanos's sword cut through vibranium yeah um in endgame that's so true. that's very true but we haven't we have yet to see anything like truly and i could be wrong but in like star wars canon and the mandalorian and stuff we haven't really seen anything we've seen like beskar being um kind of like obviously like created like molded into new things through yeah like, by way of, like the armor and stuff so obviously mm -hmm. at a certain point it is malleable so now now i think you bring up a good point. So what was Thanos's kind of shield made out of? His sword, I mean. What was I that think made it was of made of Uru, which was the, what uh, Thor's hammer wow. is made out of. If I'm not oh, okay. If yeah, any yeah, yeah. Marvel heads out there, if you know better, then let me know. But I think that that's that, what that's, it's made out of. So now I want to know Uru versus Beskar. That, that's Uru a, that's is like the, the metal of the gods. Where it's like it has like it's imbued with like magic, wow capabilities. Okay, okay. Stuff. Like that's how like he's able to like call lightning and stuff like that. And obviously that's not like an inherent quality for all of Uru, I don't think. But yeah. So here's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Beskar against Vibranium, but Uru against, Uru against Beskar. I yeah, that we'll is go with that. A very, very fair answer and very nuanced, and I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. In there. <laughs> On the topic of Mjolnir, can you think of any mm -hmm. Star Wars characters that you think would be able to wield Mjolnir or pick it up? Ooh. I mean, is it too cliche to just to say like Luke Skywalker? I mean, I wouldn't um, think so. I mean, if you can think of like, I, I'm I'm looking for more reasoning behind it, like more reasoning. Okay. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna go with Luke because that kind of seems <laughs> like the the classic answer. I'm gonna I mean, go and, that, with... and that's fair. I mean, I think that Captain America would be kind of the immediate answer from like yeah, the that's Marvel true. Universe, so I don't true. think there's any shame in that. <laughs> no, I want to be different. I want to be different. Of <laughs> yeah, we feel different. Let's go yeah. with. Uh... Let's go with Jin Erso from Rogue One, you know. Jin Erso, interesting. Why do you say that? Puts, puts the puts the life on the line for the cause for the rebellion. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty 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 solid in her in her quest. You know, gets her mission done, gets the plans for the Death Star. I think I think she should be rewarded with the ability to lift Mjolnir. I that's fair. That's... No, no, I think that that's I think that that's a good point. Yeah, kind of the, the, the willingness to sacrifice oneself for the greater mm -hmm. good is, is very admirable. Um, but I will say, have you seen those, you know, those like Thor Ragnarok short clips where with Thor Darryl. lives with like Daryl? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If there's one person in the world who I want to be able to lift me on there. It's Daryl. Daryl. I think Daryl can. And I think that he just doesn't want to hurt Thor's feelings. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a good guy like that. I think He's that Thor guy. can, or uh, Daryl can canonically lift Mjolnir. I think that's a safe bet. We'll say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah. we'll say he's also in the Star Wars universe, so that's of course. Answer. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. No, I um, I was thinking Obi Wan, mm, and yeah, you haven't watched Clone Wars yet, so you, you there's like a little bit of like a disconnect between like my reasoning and what you are familiar with and i don't want to give any spoilers but um just as generically as i can possibly say like obi-wan has mm -hmm. been through literally kind of the most 
trauma possible for an individual and still held true to his moral codex of the Jedi yep. Order, where he lost um, Anakin, Qui-Gon, everybody that he really cared about. And you can see a little bit more about that in the Clone Wars. But through all of that, he still managed to stay true to himself and true to what he believed. And I think that that would be a uh, reason enough for him to be able to wield Mjolnir personally, at least. That's a very good answer. I like that a lot. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll, um, uh, we'll have to see if that happens in Kenobi. I know. I think that Disney it will. Plus. I mean, Natalie Portman I... is in both franchises. So oh, wow. You're that right. was actually You're here. Right. I didn't write this one down, but <laughs> since we're still, we're staying on the Marvel train a bit longer, Jane Foster or versus uh, Padme Amidala. Um, I think it's gotta be Padme. Yeah. Well, I think, what, I if, think so. what if, what if Jane is Thor Jane? Mighty Ooh, Thor. Ooh, okay. It's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Padme, does Padme get a sidekick, namely Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> well, let's do one scenario with and one scenario without Jar Jar. Okay, so I think without, <laughs> I think Thor, or Jane Foster as Thor, with Padme and Jar Jar, easy. Well, Jar Jar is the the most powerful entity in the galaxy, so exactly, exactly. I think it's that's kind of unfair, unfair fight. for Jane. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So but, we'll stick with the first answer. We'll yeah, go. Okay, with, yeah. And if you Jane want Foster. to hear more about why Jar Jar is the most uh, powerful being in the galaxy, you can go back. I think it's episode thirty four of this podcast. I go into a lot of Star Wars um, conspiracy theories. The main, the title one being is Darth Jar Jar legit? And it is, I just would like to say. But, um, that's um, awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna... yeah. Uh, okay, I have one left. So we might as well mm -hmm. go for it. The Let's Jedi see. Council versus the Justice League. Ooh, okay. So Jedi Council got some serious... The Jedi Council, let's say during, like, yeah, during the prequel era... Yeah. Namely, like, more the Clone Wars era. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then, so that's 12 Jedi versus, I think it's six or seven individuals on the Justice League. Let's go with the DCEU lineup where it's Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, and Cyborg. So that's six people. Okay. Um, so it's, like, two to one Jedi to but, Justice League member. Yeah. But they also, the Jedi basically all have the same abilities, of varying yeah. like power levels, but then the um, the Justice League have a much wider scope, and they also have Superman and Flash. I think would probably be the two biggest threats in a head to head fight. But my right. thought yeah. would be like they have the Force, so as long as they like were able to kind of, as long as the Justice League didn't like catch them completely off guard, I think that the Force would be able to trump superman and the flash pretty easily and at that point it's just a matter of time you know i think i think i tend to agree i think the fact that you have that many jedi jedi i don't think flash or superman could take yeah uh, more than two jedi especially with the likes of like yoda mace windu mm -hmm. like i don't think regardless and I, I, like that being said like superman has range attacks obviously with his like uh, laser beams but they have lightsabers that's true they have lightsabers at the end of the day it comes down to the sheer power of lightsabers exactly. yeah so so but th that being said i don't know how they would kill superman if they didn't have kryptonite i don't i don't know mm. i don't know enough about that character to know yeah. if there's a way to kill him other than that but i don't know could a lightsaber could they use the force to get kryptonite i, I don't know yeah but also could they like could they like crush him to the point where it's like, like brute force it with the force? Eh, brute force. Yeah. Um, but like, is would that be a possibility? Where like, could they even like pull that off? I don't know. I think at the end of the day, what you'd have is like all the Jedi left and Superman. Yeah. And it would probably be like a stalemate at the end. Yeah, there. exactly. Like, yeah, unless they had Superman's not going to kill all the Jedi. The Jedi can't kill Superman. So yeah. No, I agree. And yeah, because I think that once they like you get like Yoda and Mace 
to kind of like restrain Superman. Mm -hmm. And then you got you still have Plo Koon, Kit Fisto, Kiati Mundi, Obi Wan Kenobi, all these super like because I mean Wonder Woman has a shield and a sword, lightsaber cuts through, done. Yeah, um, Cyborg done. Like it's just already Aquaman done already. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then Flash. Exactly. You probably need take. It's probably going to be a little bit <laughs> harder to get him just because he's he's, uh, he's quick. Everyone yeah. just stand in a circle and like throw their lightsabers at once, and you'll, someone will get them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, yeah. two, three, go. Um, go. And then I'm not even going to talk about Batman. I don't care what anyone says. Batman couldn't beat a Jedi. Like, just could not. Um, but I, I, and we I already agree. talked I about love like, Batman. Batman. <laughs> I got to agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We talked about like Batman versus a Mandalorian in the last ability to speak. And mm. what what conclusion happen. did you come to? Uh, with Mandalorian, like pretty okay. yeah. well, we, we we decided that maybe if Batman had prep time, he could possibly figure out a way to like get through like Beskar. Yeah, but if it was like just yeah. a street fight, like they just happened upon each other randomly, mm -hmm. Mandalorian, like not even the Mandalorian, like a Mandalorian, probably a Mandalorian, was. sure, because Mandalorians also like trained to defeat Jedi. So if we're saying yeah. that Jedi can be could easily take out Batman, then, Batman, yeah. then I think that we can kind of confidently say that Mandalorians can as well. I think that is very much a fair conclusion. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, and then that's about all that I have. But I think we got a bit of time. Uh, we're keeping this episode a bit shorter uh, than we have in the past. But I think that we I, I have a segment called Super Hard Star Wars Trivia. Um, from a new book that I've gotten, and I've kind of gotten to talk about it here. I'll show it on the feed. And if y'all want to see a visual of us, I'm going to have it up on uh, on YouTube. But this is a book that I got on Amazon. It's called Obsessed with Star Wars, Test Your Knowledge of a Galaxy Far, Far Away. There are 2,500 questions in this book, and they span uh, the prequel and uh, original trilogy eras. I think there's some legend stuff in here, though. So I don't think it's all canon necessarily, because I think that this was made before Disney acquired um, Star Wars. But I got this for like the purpose of getting Rank of Master questions. And upon reading it, I realized, ah, these questions are super hard. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of ridiculous. Um, and I have a couple of them. I'm, this isn't an official rank of master quiz at all. Uh, we're going to get into that right after this. Um, but I just wanted to kind of laugh with you about kind of how ridiculous and uh, like kind of needlessly difficult these questions are. So in our first ever edition of no, Super Hard Star Wars Trivia, what were you saying? Yeah, no one would be rank of master if, if we use these questions. No, I wouldn't be rank of master if we use these yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, so how many livers do Deveronians have? Is it A, three, B, two, C, one, or D, none? Wow. Right <laughs> off the bat with a yeah. what? Deveronians, uh, for those of you who don't know, they kinda, they're the ones that kind of look like devils. Um, they have like the two horns. You see there's one that's pretty prevalent in The Mandalorian season one, you know, that prison break episode where they have the big guy mm -hmm. that's like fire resistant. He's a Deveronian. And then there's also okay. like a pretty iconic in the iconic like Moss Eisley shot. Um, there's a pretty prominent Deveronian that's um, that's visible. But yeah, how many how many livers do Deveronians have? So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with three, and here's my reasoning. Okay. So I think if we see a Deveronian Moss Eisley, you know, able to handle their alcohol, three mm -hmm. livers. Yeah. That's my reasoning. That's that's a that's a decent reasoning. Um, there it's actually two. That's that's pretty embarrassing, man. Um, that's I'm not really gonna lie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, but that's that's just a little taste. I have three more questions, but that that I just yeah. I open up to a random page. It's like how many livers? It's like why why is that even a canon thing? Like, Whose job was it to decide like how many when they're livers? making a Deveronian character? <laughs> Honestly, well, fun fact. Um, Syrians, uh, that is, this is Kiati Mundi's uh, species. They actually have two hearts um, because wow. they're the ones that they have the really like the cone heads, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they um, they have two hearts because their brains are so big. 
Um, so they need extra blood flow nice. um, to their to their brains. Um, That's very anyway. interesting. So that one makes sense. Devronians having two livers doesn't really make any sense, but you know, no sense. Thing. Um, okay, which white protocol droid worked with uh, the Rebel base, uh, the Rebel Alliance in Echo Base on Hoth? Mm. Uh, is okay. it A C three P X, B R three P O, C K three P O, or D N three P O? So I think it's going to end with a three P O, and I'm going to go speaking, with that's yeah yeah statistically <laughs> it should be three P O. Um, I'm going to go with N three P O. Wrong again. It's actually K three P O. Oh Sorry. no! That's that's so embarrassing, man. I don't that's know. That's really embarrassing. <laughs> um, okay, question three. Um, mm -hmm. Which pod racer belongs to the flur? Oh, shoot, Flugrian species. Is it A. Dudbolt, B. Arc Bumpy Ruse, C. Ellen Mac, or D. Sebulba? Okay, so I think. I like the name Arc Bumpy Ruse, <laughs> but uh, I think I'm going to go with Sebulba. I forgot. I don't know what species he they, it is, so I'm going to go with that. Sebulba is actually a Doug, um, ah. so it's not Sebulba. It is Ellen Mack. Ellen um, Mack. Yeah. I know none of these. Sebulba is the only one that I – I don't even know what a yeah. Lugrian looks like. Um, yeah, that's so, – Beats me. Yeah, Sebulba was the only one I'd heard of. So yeah, no. Sebulba dugs are the ones that walk on their hands and use their feet. Uh, they have like um, dexterous feet, oh, cool. um, and so they can grab things and stuff. And then so they use their their arms or their, or their four limbs um, to walk on. So kind of unique. In there that. you go. Four yeah. limbs, two livers. All you exactly. need. Exactly. Well, four as in F O R E, not. Oh, like sorry. Four. Yeah, That's no, no, you. They do have four limbs, though. Four. Technically, F. They do have F O U R limbs, and they walk on their F O R E limbs. Um. <laughs> this is this is gonna be the most confusing podcast episode. Yet. <laughs> this actually hey, becomes okay. a spelling podcast. Exactly. We we I'll argue semantics for, for thirty yeah. minutes. Um, okay, last question, and um, super hard Star Wars trivia. What is Jedi Master Evan Peel's species? And if you had watched the Clone Wars, you would know who Evan Peel was a little more. Oh, um, wow. And I still, okay. Dude, you need to watch Clone Wars at some point. I will watch it. I will watch it. Okay, thank at you. Point, yeah. um, is it A, a Syrian? B, uh, <laughs> shoot, Shauda Ub? Or mm. C, a Nautilin? Or D, a Lanik? Because I want to hear you pronounce it again, I think I'm going to go with B. <laughs> Shad, no, Shada Oob, which is pretty which is spelled. It's spelled S H A W D A U B B. Shada Oob, okay. Nice. Yeah. See, I have no idea what that okay. looks like. It's not, that's not the answer. It's actually Atlantic. Um, ah. Evan Peel is the Jedi that has orange skin and kind of looks like Yoda almost, but he's a bit taller. Okay. Um, and he is one of the main characters in the Citadel arc of the Clone Wars. Um, he's a super cool character. I like him a lot. He speaks with like kind of a Russian, Eastern European accent. Uh, but yeah, so That's his species cool. is Lanik. I don't know what a Shao, shoot, Shada <laughs> is, but Syrians, like I talked about earlier, is Kiani Mundi's species. They have the cone heads. And the Nautilans are uh, Kit Fisto species, and they're uh, semi aquatic. Okay. And they're the ones that, like, if this is the one with green skin and the tentacles on his head. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, that's well, about I all I, I had. I that with flying colors, right? I think that you did fantastic, Scott. <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, the only one of those questions that I knew the answer to without, like, having the answers was Evan Peel's species. Evan Peel, um, yeah. So... Um, but yeah, so that's our first edition of Super Hard Star Wars Trivia. I hope that y'all found that kind of... Uh, as ridiculous as I, I wanted it to be. Um, but uh, now for the real quiz, I think it's time that we dive into the rank of master. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. Alrighty, uh, so I feel like I've explained the rank of master enough uh, times for y'all to know what this is. It's a three question quiz of ambiguous point values. Scott, right now you're a Padawan. 
Um, and so I've kind of changed the rules since you did this the first time, though. Uh, if you don't know the answer to a question, I, I encourage people to kind of try to talk about uh, any Star Wars topics that they can think of that are kind of adjacent to whatever the question is. And kind of just let me know that you have a general understanding of Star Wars uh, just in general. And I might uh, account for that in the final tally just because I'm aware of the fact that not everyone is uh, super into the same types of stuff in Star Wars. And so I want to accommodate for that. Um, and I've also kind of made these questions easier because I've been told that you and Sean got the hardest quizzes um, for Youngling. And you passed, Sean did. But um, yes. <laughs> So in that case, uh, with that in mind, are you ready to start with your quiz? You're going from Padawan to Knight in this quiz. I am ready. Let's do it. Okay, awesome. I'm shoot. I'm actually realizing that two out of the three of these questions we've actually already kind of talked about in this episode. So I didn't know that. Hey, we were now going it's to. just now it's a memory yeah. test. You know? Exactly. Um, what is the name of the spaceport infamous for its quote unquote scum and villainy visited by Ben Kenobi and Luke Skywalker in Episode Four: A New Hope? Okay, I'm gonna have to go with Moss Eisley. Moss Eisley is correct. You are one for yes. one so far on your way from Padawan to Knight. Um, okay, question number two. What creature allegedly native to the moons of Iago does Anakin believe Padme is upon first meeting her? In episode one, The Phantom Menace. Oh, yeah. He, he asks, are you a blank? A or am, yes. I should say. Yes. Um, yeah. I'm going to be honest, I don't think I'm going to get this one. Interesting. But, uh, well, th yeah, okay, that's fair. Can you talk through... It's, it's, been, it's been a while since I've seen Phantom Menace, but yes, I, I, I kind of remember the scene when they meet, first meet. Um, I'm trying to think of what he says, but... But it's a... Uh, how is this does this species come up in other star wars movies like, not in movies there is a, a slight nod to it in the clone wars, the clone um, wars. whenever okay, nice. whenever anakin and obi-wan uh travel to the, uh, iago itself and okay. the creatures have been exiled from the moons that they were native to because of the separatist occupation of the planet um, okay okay but they are very beautiful and peaceful creatures um and i'm gonna go yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. I'm going to say purely from reading Homer's Odyssey in the sixth grade in class with you, I'm going to say sirens. Sirens. That's actually a pretty like solid, um, pretty solid option. It's actually angels. Angel. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Are you an angel? An angel. Oh my God. Now that you say that. Yeah. Yeah. Now that so, you say that. that yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, no shame in that. That's a little bit of a, a tougher question. Uh, and you're one okay. for two going into question three, which I'm I'm fairly certain that you're going to get this one just because of the conversation we had earlier. But question number three is, also known as Mandalorian or Iron, what is the energy repellent metal in integral to Mandalorian metal jerk? I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> one second. Also known as Mandalorian Iron, what is the energy repellent metal integral to Mandalorian metal jury, metal, metal jury, prominently seen, worn, and wielded by Din Djarin in The Mandalorian, the TV show. Okay. So I know it's not Uru <laughs> or, or Vibranium. Good. Those are both canonically non existent in Star Wars. Yep. They don't yeah. exist. So I think it must be Beskar. That is correct. And yeah, I didn't even, I honestly did not mean for that to happen. I created these questions completely independent of the uh, it's okay. what's it's it called okay. questions. I didn't even think about that. But hey, uh, um, yes, so it is Beskar. Um, and we already talked about that earlier in the episode. But um, so you went two for three, which is pretty solid. And I think that you had a general understanding of the, the angel question. But you had the idea of the context, at least. And so uh, I think that for all of these reasons, uh, you, I think that you can move on to the rank of knight. Yes. yes. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. I'm very of excited. Course. I'm excited. It's a great too. honor. Yeah. So you're one of, wear this title. You're one of three knights on the channel now. 
Um, okay. So you, Jeb, and Sean, actually. So Sean, nice. I don't know if you watched the most recent episode of The Ability to Speak, um, but Sean actually got to but take it twice. Sean um, became a Padawan and then a knight. Yeah, in the same day. It was wild. In the same day. <laughs> the remaining real quick. Yeah, mainly because I felt bad because apparently his first uh, test was, was, was a little too difficult. But um, <laughs> that being said, uh, yeah, next time you're on, you'll have the ability to go up to the rank of master, um, which is wow. super exciting. Uh, and then once you're there, you have the ability to challenge me for the rank of grandmaster, should you choose to do so. Um, oh, I, I will choose. I will choose <laughs> to do course. so. And we still need to figure out how we're going to do that segment. I think that Jeb and I have decided that like, if either of, of y'all decide to go up against me, then either of y'all will like mediate it in a way. Yeah. So I'll, ha- I'll try to have you on if Jeb comes up against me. And I'll try to have Jeb on if you come against me. And then I'll have one of y'all on if someone else does. Um, yep. But uh, but yeah, so congratulations. Um, how does it feel? It, it feels amazing. I already feel good as a knight, you know. A knight <laughs> is just a cool cool title. I'm very happy to wear it. Of course, and and you more than deserve it. Uh, alrighty, so that's about all that I have for today's episode. But this wouldn't be a proper episode if I didn't leave you with just a little bit more. more! Alrighty, so this more actually comes from this uh, the super hard Star Wars question fact book, but it is uh, that Anakin Skywalker is one point eight five meters or six feet tall um, in Attack of the Clones. Wow. So that's just a little bit of useless Star Wars knowledge for you. Um, Yeah, that's about it. Uh, That's all that I have. Scott, do you have anything? Thank you for having me, Jonah. It's been a pleasure. Um, Yeah, I'm excited to be a knight. Of course. Excited to have you as a knight. Um, Alrighty. Well, thank you all for listening to this edition of The Ability to Speak Does Not Make You Intelligent. Um, And we hope that you all enjoyed it. Uh, Go ahead and follow us on social media at Twin Sun Talks. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, Twin Sun Talks Podcasts. Follow us on streaming platforms, Twin Sun Talks. Uh, and check out our website if you want, which is twinsuntalks.wixsite.com slash twin dash sun. I think that's all. Um, that being said, you've taken your first steps into a larger world. May the force be with you. And I will see y'all in the next episode. Bye, friends. <laughs>